Nebraska's farmers had harvested 79% of their corn and 98% of their soybeans as of the latest USDA Progress report. We've told you before how cattle grazing on that open land can actually benefit soybean production the following year. However, UNL Extension Forage Specialist Bruce Anderson says black nightshade is present in a number of fields and carries a risk to animals that might consume it. We talked with Bruce Monday about why producers need to keep an eye on the plant as livestock are turned out into those lands. Black nightshade is a, is a weed that we tend to see often occurring in many of our soybean and sometimes in our cornfields, especially uh, if the canopy has been damaged. And this year we've had an awful lot of hail in many places, so it lets light get in there and the black nightshade starts to thrive and we get quite a bit out there. And there's some concern that it's maybe common in fields this year? It is very common in many fields and very dense and a lot of people are concerned about uh, that density. Okay, why is it toxic to livestock? Well, it's got toxins and different poisons, solanine in them that uh, uh, is present in the leaves, in the stems, also in the green berries. As the berries start mm -hmm. turning ripe, uh, it starts to lose it in the berries, but the foliage still stays poisonous. So when cattle owners put their livestock out on corn stalks or bean stubble for grazing this time of the year, uh, we have some concerns that the animals might be attracted to the nightshade, start consuming mm -hmm. Uh, enough of that to end up having poisoning problems. Could it also affect horses if you have horses mixed in there or uh, it, other it, livestock it, as well? It has uh, effects on horses, on sheep, on most of the type of livestock that we could have in this area. Does it appear that the cattle uh, selectively graze this plant at all, or do they favor one part of the plant uh, rather than the other? Well, that's one of the things that I think we're fortunate with, is that the animals don't seem to find the black nightshade very palatable. Uh, we've had black nightshade in pastures and in uh, uh, residue fields for many years, and people have grazed it without too many problems. But some of the concern maybe this year is that it's so widespread, that as a result, uh, there's gonna be a lot more animals that will have the potential to select from it. Also with the recent cold temperatures, uh, the plant may have changed its composition enough to make it more attractive to the animals. So we just have a little uncertainty as to what's going to be happening out in those fields. Describe the toxicity levels that you would be uncomfortable with that you think really could cause problems. Well, old data, and, and when I say old data, we're mm -hmm. talking about information that's as much as 50 years old, suggests that uh, a thousand pound cow should not consume more than one to three pounds of black nightshade. Uh, but because we haven't seen problems in the past, I think that's a pretty conservative number. And because we've had uh, uh, many times situations where the potential for toxicity existed and we didn't see very much problems, that most producers will be able to get by fine, but we're gonna have to keep our eyes open and, and watch for any kind of problems, I think. The hard freeze that uh, swept across Nebraska this week, at least most of Nebraska this week, uh, does that change whether or not the plant is still able to produce the toxin? Well, it's probably not growing anymore, but the toxins that are in the plant are going to be very stable. So the plant still is going to in have it toxicity potential out there. And what I suggest producers do is that primarily, if you're going to graze the field, uh, put maybe just a few animals out to begin with to see if they graze on the black nightshade. If they don't, put the rest of the herd out there. But always be observant. Watch for any changes. And if they do start to graze on the black nightshade, preferentially especially, then maybe it would be wise to move them off that field and, and go somewhere else where the nightshade won't be a problem. Again, Bruce says drying as hay or after a freeze will not reduce the toxicity of black nightshade. He says for animals that may have consumed black nightshade, visual signs don't provide clear diagnosis of poisoning. But animals that are acting lethargic or weak or appear to be breathing heavily or salivating could suggest a potential problem.